Let's get the formal introduction from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the Manchester Evening News Arena here in Manchester, England, as we have a big night of action in store for you, and it's all brought to you by Frank Warren's Sports Network. This bout also coming to you courtesy of Gary Shaw Productions, along with Showtime and sponsored by Lonsdale. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC and the USBA, along with the British Boxing Board of Control. The steward in charge is Jeff Bolter. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this title bout from ringside, from Kent, England, Mark Green. From London, Ian John Lewis. And also from Kent, we have Larry O'Connell. Introducing our third man of the ring, the referee in charge of the action, Richie Davies. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Continental Americas and the USBA Super Middleweight Championship. Introducing to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the red corner, entering the ring wearing gold trunks with black trim, fighting out of Memphis by way of Covington, Tennessee in the United States. He weighed in at 11 stone, 11 and one half pounds, or 165 and one half U.S. pounds. His record stands at 20 wins, two losses, and two draws, with 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the current WBC Continental Americas and the NABF light heavyweight champion, introducing Donnell Cadillac Wiggins. And his opponent across the ring, the defending champion on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing light blue trunks and hailing from St. Petersburg, Florida in the United States. His weight, 11 stone, 13 and one half pounds, or 167 and one half U.S. pounds. He is a 2000 U.S. Olympic representative tonight, making his British debut. His professional record stands at 15 wins, no losses, 12 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is currently ranked number eight contender by the IBF and the WBC. Here is the undefeated WBC Continental Americas and the USBA Super Middleweight Champion, introducing Jeff Left Hook Lacey. Once again, a referee in charge is Richie Davies, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of championship boxing scheduled. Jeff. Okay, fellas, you've both had your instructions in the dressing rooms. Do as you're told, give me a good clean contest, and make sure you defend yourselves at all times. Shake hands now, good luck to you both. Florida native Jeff Lacey, who comes off his longest layoff, five months, his worst cut, requiring 22 stitches over his left eye. He went 12, but dominated a very game Richard Grant, who was dropped two times and utterly battered by Knight's end. Tremendous opportunity, but a daunting task for Donnell Wiggins out of Covington, Tennessee, his first fight outside the States. And going down in weight, holder of two fringe titles at 175, he's had limited opposition. His most notable, Rodney Moore, whom Wiggins closely outpointed in October to avenge a second-round TKO uh, de defeat. Lacey in the uh, powder blue with the white trim holds three marginal belts. One of the top prospects in boxing. Prodigious KO power in both hands, and he can take people out, uh, as you know, how with a body shot. This is the very first fight Tanel Wiggins has ever fought at 168 pounds uh, in his career. He was as high as 200, started his career at 186, as you mentioned. He has the NABF Light Heavyweight Championship. That's where he's made his mark, but they told us, uh, he and his trainer and manager, uh, Malcolm Terry, told us that they feel comfortable at 168, and we'll find that out tonight. Yeah, he walks around at, at 180. He said he had no problem making this weight. Uh, he's been all over the map, as you uh, mentioned, at heavyweight, cruiserweight, light heavy, now fighting at uh, super uh, middleweight. We'll find out if he is indeed a step up for Jeff Lacey or a, or a fellow who's here for a, a quote-unquote payday. Jeff Lacey uh, being groomed for a title fight with one of the European champions, led, of course, by Welshman Joe Calzaghe. There's the uppercut on the inside by Wiggins. He has a very good uppercut. 
And I'm sure the Lacey people have scouted him, but he threw that punch from fairly far back. He's going to have to be on the inside when he throws it. Pretty good right hand there by Wiggins over the top. The last time Lacey fought in the UK, he ended matters inside one round. Seven of his 12 knockouts in the first. All 12 knockouts within three rounds. And he dropped his last opponent, the alien Grant, in the opening round, although it went to the 12-round distance. An excellent first round so far for Donnell Wiggins. Now, you know, obviously, Jeff Lacey is not the quickest starter on the planet. We saw they even get some more Anwar Oshana, though in the, later in the first round, he got busy. But Wiggins, is, his punches are straight. He's throwing good combinations. And uh, on the inside, there's that uppercut we talked about. Wiggins, uh, without a doubt, in his biggest fight on his biggest stage here. There was a low blow undetected by the, the referee, a low blow by Lacey. Wiggins has never been down by his account. His two losses by TKO. The first, his people claim on a fractured hand. The second, when they couldn't stop the bleeding from a cut. The earliest Wiggins has been stopped round two versus Rodney Moore in 2002. And as mentioned, he did avenge that defeat. Final 10 seconds of the opening round. It's scheduled for 12. As Al pointed out, Donnell Wiggins holding his own against Jeff Lacey. Let's check. And we're set for round two, scheduled for uh, 12. Jeff Lacey in the powder blue trunks, Donnell Wiggins in the gold with the black trim. Janelle yes, Wiggins yes, 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 uh, felt that Lacey would be surprised at his hand speed and his combinations and whether Lacey surprised or not. The fact is, in the first round, Wiggins was able to make very good use of both of those things, and I thought won the first round. Questions, concerns coming to this bout. Lacey, who, who stepped up against the awkward, elusive Richard Grant, his last bout, won a lopsided decision. Yet he did seem frustrated at times, uh, losing concentration. Felt he didn't uh, jab or go to the body enough. Also uh, took 22 stitches, as mentioned. Still has scar tissue over the left eye from that nasty cut. Still noticeably uh, swollen. And he hasn't fought in about five months. We'll see if uh, any of that uh, affects him. You know, his nickname might be Left Hook Lacey, and he does have an excellent left hook, but I think most people in the boxing world know now that that's just a nickname because he has a very good arsenal. And Wiggins and uh, Malcolm Terry told us, we're not preparing for a guy to throw left hooks. We're preparing for a complete fighter um, who will jab, throw right hands, do all the things that you're supposed to do. But so far, to know Wiggins looks very well prepared. He's fighting a very good fight. Yeah, ironically, uh, Lacey probably throws the right more than the left hook. There's the jab of Lacey, and the, he and uh, Roger Blood with his trainer, very definitive that they would try and use that punch a lot more. Good hand speed by Wiggins. Nice exchange there. Again, Wiggins standing right in and trading confidently with a very powerful Jeff Lacey. Wiggins powerfully built himself. Lacey, uh, before the fight, thought that Wiggins might be bigger than him, but then uh, when he met him, he realized uh, he's not. Wiggins' upper, upper body, though, looks like a light heavyweight upper body. It really does. And, of course, this is, as we mentioned, this is the first time he's ever fought at 168. Lowest he ever fought before this, Wiggins, was 170. Talked about the fact that uh, Lacey is uh, highly skilled, not just the left hook, and you wonder if he'll be tempted to uh, really live up to his left hook nickname because he's looking to impress uh, local fans, the promoter, Frank Warren here in England, etc., in an attempt to get in there with someone like Joe Calzaghe, the WBO super middleweight champion. <laughs> When uh, Janelle Wiggins and Malcolm Terry left Covington, uh, Tennessee, they dreamt that these were the first two rounds they saw. These are good for them. And round two of the books.
Janelle Wiggins is off to an excellent start in this match, and part of the reason is because he's been able to put his punches together. There you see him start out with the jab, throw a variety of punches, and push Jeff Lacey back. Now, not everything landed, but as you can see, that was enough to score points against Lacey. The British Boxing Board of Control does not allow microphones in the corners, so we'll do our, our best ringside. They're doubling their jabs up there, like twos and threes, and then come with your punches behind. Don't reach for them. And like that. Ten seconds, bonus. Boxing shots are there for you all day. Let's try them at your distance. Round three. You can make out some of the words by the personable trainer, Roger Bloodworth. Very experienced, used to have uh, people like Andrew Galata, Fernando Vargas, also worked with Holyfield, uh, Whitaker, Taylor. A lot of experience in that corner. Aussie Robbie Peden, the former NABF featherweight champ as well. The cut man Mick Williamson hopes uh, it's a quiet night for him. Into the third round, scheduled for 12 with three uh, fringe titles held by Lacey at 168. Wiggins holds a couple at 175, <laughs> moving down in weight for uh, some exposure and uh, some money and to get in there with uh, a bigger name. And w Wiggins thought that he could campaign at 168 if he had to. And of course, this fight will be the litmus test for him. So far, he's performing very well. But of course, as we go on in this fight, that's the point. Did, will losing the weight have an impact on him? Well, Jeff Lacey certainly hopes so. Uh, coming into this fight, uh, many thought this was merely a confidence-building affair for Jeff Lacey. Good shot over the top, but now Lacey is beginning to land with more regularity. That left hand got in, flush on the face. So far, the battle of the jabs is being won by Wiggins, and Lacey wanted very much to improve his jab in this fight. Now, there's the body work that Roger Bloodworth, as we heard, was calling for from Lacey. Yeah, so far, this doesn't look like a safe opponent, a pad your record type opponent for Jeff Lacey. Well, Danelle Wiggins came in here with some credentials. He had a long and good amateur career. He's the NABF light heavyweight champion, which is a regional title, but nevertheless, he's a guy who knows how to box. Lacey landing with a lunging right, but back comes Wiggins, uh, pinning Lacey on the ropes. So this is a, a more competitive situation than a lot of folks thought going in. Now there's Lacey using the uppercut. I mentioned that Wiggins has a good uppercut. Lacey himself is very adept with that punch. And you know, I'm going to contradict myself. I said in the keys to victory, I thought Wiggins might perform better on the inside. He's also been very good on the outside. Why not? I do it all the time. <laughs> I took Contradiction 101. Yeah, you're very adept at it, I'd say. If you're going to contradict anybody, it should be yourself. All right, sir. Well, it is a competitive uh, situation, allowing Lacey uh, to grow as a fighter. That's a good way to look at it. Might be more than that. Right now, to know Wiggins is beating him. He's, yeah. he's winning these rounds, and he is performing very well on both the inside and the outside. You see it there. Right, P.S., as long as he wins. Look, why hold a bucket? Somebody got it. Look, why is you sitting there holding him on the damn rope when you were beating him boxing? Spit. Box the boy. He throwing short fucking shots, man. Box him down there. Do you hear me? Understand you beat him. Do not sit up there. Alright. On the inside, Danelle Wiggins lands that uppercut, but here's Lacey landing a very good right hand and then pushing Danelle Wiggins back, and it buttresses the point that Malcolm Terry just made and that I said maybe the outside's better for Wiggins. I'm going to reverse my field on this one. I had no idea to know Wiggins from the tapes we saw could box this effectively in the outside. He's doing a great job. Well, so he says he really doesn't have a set style, that he can box, fight, do whatever it takes. Well, he's uh, bringing that to the table right here. 
showing uh, pretty good technical skills against uh, Jeff Lacey. Now, from Lacey's standpoint, he will need to, to use the jab a little bit more. And if Wiggins continues to box, I think Roger Bloodworth was correct in telling Lacey to try and go downstairs a little bit. Uh, he's a very good body puncher, and it would be helpful to him. Now, Wiggins manager, trainer Malcolm Terry, thinks that Lacey and company uh, came in underestimating Wiggins, feeling that uh, his only real loss came to top 10 cruiserweight Louis Azeal in an eighth round TKO. And that was in only the eighth fight that Danelle Wiggins had. So that was a, a really an opponent that he probably shouldn't have been in against. And it was a fight in which they couldn't stop the bleeding on a cut as far as Wiggins went. But Wiggins, as we are uh, seeing here, does have good skills. He comes forward. He can apply pressure. He certainly has no fear. But if there's one thing that he may lack, it's big punching power. Of his 20 victories, 11 by knockout. But he can mix it up. He's got good heart. But he is hittable. And Jeff Lacey looking for the opening to do just that. Just missed with a left hook there, did Lacey. A whipper of a hook. And Wiggins, like Lacey, although not as successful, an extensive amateur career, close to 160 amateur fights. Lacey is having a very hard time measuring Wiggins. Wiggins giving him just enough lateral movement. Now there's where Malcolm Terry doesn't want Wiggins, and I'm on board with him now. If I'm Wiggins, I'm staying on the outside. Lacey has landed very good shots in the inside. I would have thought that Wiggins would have prospered a little bit more in here, but he's not as much as you would like in any case. Lacey's getting some very heavy body shots in on the inside, then an overhand right followed by a straight left. So he's landing now. And a moment ago, Wiggins was able to get that uppercut in, and that's a good weapon for him. But on the outside, his hand speed is, believe it or not, he's the light heavyweight coming down. Uh, Lacey, we know, is an excellent combination puncher. It's Wiggins' hand speed that is giving Jeff Lacey some issues right now. Which is not to suggest Lacey isn't getting some things done, but not as consistent an effort as he wants. Close rounds here now, though. After the first two, are clearly Wiggins. See, when you come up and set up in front of him, he's, he's watching you. So he's sitting there and he's trying to break that eye with you. All right? You got to keep that left hand up. This is great. On the inside where some of this round was fought, you see Lacey using the clubbing right hand. There's the uppercut from Wiggins. It's one of his best weapons on the inside. And as they were at long range, here's where the jab was effective for Lacey. And he really wants to throw that punch. Boy, is that a demonstration of how much more effective he is when he uses that punch. Right hand up. I don't want to sneak right hand. Right hand is going to the right. You know when he walks over to the right, he's going to be looking for the right hand. Okay, Colas. Seconds up. Round five. A lot of attention uh, to that previously injured left eye. An injury that took place in his last fight as Wiggins opens up the uh, round with a good combination to the head. And using that the left go. eye as target Take practice. Come on. Take it out. Wiggins really unloading and has Lacey on the ropes. But he is starting to exchange left hooks with Lacey, and he just got nailed with one. It's a very, very dangerous ploy for Wiggins. He's got to be careful, Steve, not to get so confident that he feels like he can do those kinds of things in this fight. The old boxing expression, as we've talked about many times, don't hook with a hooker, because that's that person's intent, and they're usually going to do it better. Particularly this man, Jeff Lacey. But I like the way Lacey's using the jab for as uh, that terrific replay pointed out that you were describing. He said that's what he was working on coming into this fight. Also, punching where the other guy was getting set to punch. 
And it looks like Lacey's confidence is growing here now as the fight builds on. Wiggins is allowing him to work a little more by languishing on the inside. And part of the thing is he's not punching that much on the inside. There's that hook again by Lacey. So um, it is becoming a very important punch for him. And I think Roger Bloodworth would still like to see more body work from Lacey, but this has been a better round for Jeff Lacey. Punch on. At 23, Donnell Wiggins felt this was a huge opportunity for him. And we can see that he prepared that way. He came here with the idea that he could do some things against Jeff Lacey, and he has done them. They did their scouting well, and they, they realized that if Wiggins boxed effectively and used his hand speed, he'd do well in there. At this point, exceeding expectations in the final minute of round five. And it's a very close fight. Certainly these have been close rounds. Probably the most definitive for the first two that Wiggins won, but after that they've been very close. How about that devilish grin on the face of Donnell Wiggins feeling that uh, he knows something perhaps that somebody else doesn't and that somebody else is in top of blue trunk. Both men landing excellent shots on the inside. And here comes Jeff Lacey popping shots off the head of Wiggins, but Wiggins doesn't seem to be affected. Lacey missing with a right. So things really heating up now towards the end of the fifth. Excellent round five. Yeah, you got it. You got it now, so you ain't waiting on it. The first couple of rounds, you were a little rusty. And you were waiting. The timing was a little off. And now you're coming. excited and starts going. When you come up to him and he steps back again, step up again. That's all you got to do. You don't have to get too excited. But Roger you can't. Bloodworth pleased with some of the things that Lacey did in that last round. And we see him there using the jab and getting the hook in, throwing more combinations. A lot of those blocked, though, by uh, Danelle Wiggins. And again, on the inside, Lacey using the uppercut. Both men have that punch in their arsenal, and they use it very effectively. Both wanting to win the battle of the jabs, that demonstrated there. We are headed for a very intriguing finish to this fight, I'll tell you. Well, it's round six. It took a little while for Lacey to get on track, but uh, finding his timing and, uh, and rhythm, and good defense there by Lacey, blocking a lot of those uh, shots in that uh, flurry, attempted flurry by Wiggins. And if we're going to watch Wiggins in terms of the weight loss to get down to 168, obviously the impact will be as the fight wears on. Did he uh, lose too much weight? Did he do it in a, a timely fashion or did he try and get it off too quick? These are the issues. But you know, he has fought, fought his last fight at 173, which wasn't that much over 168. Here comes Lacey. I didn't go with his arms out. What's your head? Oh, nice right uppercut on the inside of the jaw by Wiggins. In that exchange. And now in this round, Wiggins is more active when he's on the inside. Lacey being somewhat cautious now, measuring Wiggins out. But marching forward, taking big, deep breaths. The longest layoff of his career for Jeff Lacey because of the cut. Could there be rust involved here? Is he as sharp as he would like to be? So far, the answer to that is no. He is not as sharp as he'd like to be. His previous longest uh, layoff was after a fight in which he broke it, his hand. This one comes after a bad cut, a nasty cut against Richard the Alien Grant over the left eye. What's the hand like? Wiggins makes, continues to make good use of the uppercut, and now he is landing a variety of punches against Lacey. His mission in this fight, though, Steve Wiggins, 
is to not get careless against a power puncher like Jeff Lacey. Earlier on, it seemed like he might be getting uh, somewhat overconfident, but he seems to have things in check now. A slapping right cross by Wiggins that connected on the face. Wiggins is not a monstrous uh, knockout puncher. He's got 11 KOs and 20 uh, knockout and 20 wins, so it's not like he'll knock you out with one punch. Meanwhile, Jeff Lacey, 15 and 0 with 12 knockouts. Wiggins, a four and a half year pro, 22 and two. That's 20 wins, two losses, two draws with 11 KOs. Lacey rated number seven by the WBO and number eight by the BC and IVF. 2000 US Olympian at 165 who lost in the quarterfinals. Well, back in uh, July at the Playboy Mansion, Jeff Lacey won big but yeah, had some anxious well moments versus the awkward Richard the Alien Grant, Al. In this bout, Jeff Lacey suffered for the first time uh, a cut. It came on this clash of heads. It created a cut around his left eye that would ultimately require 22 stitches. He continued on in the fight and performed well, and Roger Bloodworth told us he was as poised as he could be. You see how bad that cut was. He handled it with great poise and equanimity, and he went on to win this fight. However, it did create the long layoff, and uh, we're now wondering whether that layoff has had an impact on him. Don't lay against the ropes. I know you're looking for the counter shot. And turning, turning, then look for your shots. Ten seconds, come on, Colton. Second round seven. Set for round seven, a very concerned look on the face of Jeff Lacey as he starts the next round. Lacey's trainer, Roger Bloodworth, impressed that Lacey didn't panic, as you point out. After seeing that uh, replay of the fight with Grant, he, he said uh, Lacey let the medicine do its job. And of course, uh, Jeff improved to 15 and 0. Although he, he scored a first round knockdown, he was extended to the 12. Should point out that uh, the sound we're getting is from the mic that's on our camera, uh, because as we said, the uh, boxing control board here won't let us put a microphone in the corner, but those microphones on the camera are doing the trick for us. Where there's a will, there's a way. You might want to write that one down. I've never heard that before. And that's a person who uses the word equanimity. I'm very impressed <laughs> out. It's my word for the day. I have to carry a thesaurus around. Minute gone by round seven. Scheduled for 12. Well, to say the plot is thickening here is the understatement of the year. Look at that combination by Donnell Wiggins. Um, I mean, he is... Uh, However the judges decide to score this fight, the bottom line is already Danelle Wiggins has raised his stock in the boxing world, and Jeff Lacey has had enough issues that this is not exactly the performance they want. Left hook upstairs, that's scored by uh, Jeff Lacey. The heck with the ringside judges. It's yours that counts as far as I'm concerned. And how do you see it? Uh, I have the three-point edge for Danelle Wiggins right now. Oh, my. And, and there were a couple of very close rounds there, so I would, it wouldn't be shocking or inappropriate for this fight to be a, a point or two closer. But either way, it has to be a very close fight in which um, Wiggins has put himself in a very good position uh, to try and pull the upset off. And that said, in all due respect to uh, Mark Green, Ian John Lewis, and Larry O'Connell, the official ringside judge. All from England. Under a minute left, round seven. And uh, it's safe to say that Mr. Lacey uh, has his hands full here. This has been an excellent round for Wiggins. I mean, he has been the aggressor. He has pushed Lacey back and landed really most of the really good punches in this round. So a big key will be how these middle rounds were scored, rounds four through six that were fairly close. And you can see the bulge over the left eye of yeah. Jeff Lacey becoming more pronounced as this fight progresses. And that's from his last fight over five months ago. A whipping right hand by Jeff Lacey as he opens up here in round seven. And we have to remind everybody that Jeff Lacey is a dangerous fighter, and any one punch can make a difference here. Is this a, if a buzzer went off in Lacey's head and said, I better get going. And it looks like Lacey's punches are getting harder. Now look at Lacey stare Wiggins down. But that eye 
becoming a concern. That's better. Now you keep in control of it. Do not let him walk you back to the ropes and keep you on the ropes, all right? And when you turn it, when you turn it, bring that left hand up, come out with a hook. And then we'll watch it. Miles is coming, Rob. It's eight coming. Huh? Eight coming. Okay. Just boxing until the eyes shut. Then we are going in the phone. Two men are coming. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't watch them. Oh, I don't watch them. Alice swimming over the left eye of Jeff Lacey, as it was described to us by Lacey and Roger Bloodworth, is called a keloid. And Lacey, in fact, said to us, it's something that's probably going to be there uh, for the rest of his, his life. And uh, it, it, the only thing is, it doesn't look good right now. Well, he said it was the keloid scarring, but the swelling seems to have gotten a little bit worse from some of those right hands that Deno Wiggins is hitting him with. Lacey becoming more aggressive, as you suggested, Steve. And uh, they were happy with his work toward the end of the round. I don't know if that was enough to win him the round, though. That's the question. In an unexpectedly closer fight than a lot of people anticipated, we had a round eight. I think the difference here is Lacey has landed some pretty good punches in this fight. In their mind, I guess, he and... Uh, uh, and Bloodworth, and also Gary Shaw, his promoter, felt that when he hit Danell Wiggins, he would hurt him enough to create a knockout. That's what hasn't happened here. Relatively unknown, unheralded Danell Wiggins out of Covington and Memphis, Tennessee, marching into England for the first time and holding his own against unbeaten former Olympian. Potential future world champion Jeff Left Hook Lacey. We should point out that Joe Souza, the normal cut man for Lacey, is not here. Mac Williams, who uh, works with uh, Ricky Hatton, was chosen to work on the cuts, and who better? He's done a great job on Ricky Hatton. He's had so much practice. Yes, he has. With Ricky. The ubiquitous Joe Souza, not with us. If he's tuned in, we uh, say hello. Good round so far for Lacey here in round eight, though. He's been more active, landing power shots like that, and pushing Denell Wiggins back. Although knowing Joe, he's probably working today. Minute to go, round eight. The key moment in this bout. Now Denell Wiggins being hit with big power shots. Can he accept this from Jeff Lacey? Oh, big right hand over the top by Lacey. And that got the attention of Wiggins. Oh, Wiggins is down. Two, three, four, five, six. He spit out the mouthpiece. And it means nine. He's up, but it's over. He's up in nine, but it's over. Usually when they spit out the mouthpiece, it means it's over. And in this case, once again, it's true. Yeah, baby. Hey, man, I still got the strength to knock him out. Same B, baby. Clearwater. Tampa. Jeff Lacey saying hello to all of his friends and family in the Florida area, Clearwater and Tampa. He says, well, it's the eighth round, but I still got enough to knock them out. We caution all of you that the power of Jeff Lacey was the wild card in this. Clearly not the performance he wanted over most of this fight, but he was able to use his power to get Danelle Wiggins out of there. They thought that would happen earlier, but Lacey got it done with his power, and uh, we know he has that. He showed patience, and once again, he showed power. And the attend to that uh, damaged left eye. And Roger Bloodworth, uh, always teaching, always instructing continues to do it even after the fight. You knew as soon as that mouthpiece went flying out, it was over. In round eight, Janelle Wiggins, who had performed so well up to this point, was caught by several major blows. The overhand right was a big punch during the course of this. There's the hook by 
Lacey. The right hands, the bludgeoning right hands were the key to getting Danelle Wiggins out of there. And also the body work. During the course of this round, he did some extremely good body work. He was setting up the overhand right with the jab, even just by putting the left hand out there. And at the end of the fight, there's the body work I talked about. That was very debilitating. And the right hand ultimately was the punch that put Wiggins down. And there goes the mouthpiece. He managed to, uh, to get up, showed some, some heart, holding his head there over the right eye. Showed some heart in getting up, but he didn't want to continue. No argument with the referee. So we're set for the official word as Jeff Lacey comes up victorious once again as we send it up to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes, 33 seconds in round number 8. Our referee in charge, Richie Davies, stops the contest, the opponent in no position to defend himself. He's the winner by way of technical knockout, still undefeated, and still the WBC Continentals and USBA Super Middleweight Champion, Jeff Left Hook Lacey.